Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. You never know who you're going to meet when you talk to people and what they do and the interesting things that they provide. I found somebody who is your spiritual pathfinder, and she is somebody who works with people who are healers, mentors, people who are intuitive, counselors. It could even be somebody who's a CEO at a company that wants to better connect with their staff. And these are people who get energy and energy work. And she's with us today. We're going to learn a lot about what she does. Jessica Maingun is on the program. Jessica, welcome. How are you? I'm good. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, it's good to have you back here. I learned a little bit more about what you do last time. And I find it fascinating that you help people who do this work anyway. So you could be an energy healer or you could be a doctor. You could be a nurse. You have empathy, but you want to call it up your game and do that in such a way using using energy work and energy healing. Am I getting that right? Is that, am I clear on that? I, I think I do need to hire you to <laughs> be my <laughs> spokesperson. <laughs> Those yeah. elevator speeches can be really tough. Yeah, that's spot on. Uh, and I was I was thinking about it today and I realized, you know, <laughs> I work with a lot of different people because what I do is so abstract, right? It's hard to pigeonhole, but you literally just nailed it. So it's kind of like- you know what? what you do is not out of the norm. There are people who deal in energy and energy healers and, and work with just regular people like me, but you work with a specific audience of people who want to harness the energy for good. Or, you know, let's say somebody's a nurse and they they understand energy and all that it encompasses, but they want to just do a better job at what they do. And that that's where you come in. Yep, this is true. Mm. Yeah. A lot of times I, I take um, what we might call left brain thinking, which is what we're raised with, right? Like one plus one equals two. <laughs> And that's the norm. It's the linear thinking. It's the way we look at things. It's how we study and how we how we are and how we become successful. But then I combine that with the right brain, which is the creative, artistic, intuitive, kind of feminine, let's just say, side to help enhance and balance the energies within a person. And it's you and I talked about it earlier. It's almost like there's a movement that's happening right now this yeah. awakening with people who are really beginning to understand that yeah business is business and that's all good but there's this dynamic that needs to come into play and it's one of more compassion and yeah. understanding people on a deeper level maybe even more than they know themselves and um it's been not lacking but let's just say it's, it is growing very rapidly right now awakening is a great word and i don't know if we mentioned this last time but a younger audience younger demographic, when they pick up on it, it goes mainstream. It's just, that's the way it works. And if you take a look at a younger generation, it's a different mindset. It's more about spirituality, more about being more people, even though it's all, you know, on social media and we're typing a lot, it's more about connecting, making a, a greater connection. Uh, and, and how, you know, started with Google, I think, you know, 10 years ago where, Work is also fun. Work is also play. Work is also social, where they started putting in uh, video games and cafes and babysitting and every everything you need to be social within their buildings. And I think that was the, the, the beginning of that movement where, you know, I don't want to just work. I want to have more of a connection, more spiritual feel to where I am, which, you know, good for both of us because we believe in energy and uh, that it's, it's for good. Uh, it'll be here for good as well because it's been here for such a long time. Um, let's talk about one of the programs, like an example of one of the programs that you offer. I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> um, I sent you the, the outline for my metamorphosis, yeah, the meta metamorphosis program. mentorship program, right? It is my passion. I think I've mentioned passion quite a few times, but this is an all encompassing look at not only meditation and meditative strategies so i mean obviously if you're going to be receiving let's just say from the other side you have to have a clear mind clear physical clear emotional clear spiritual 
aspect itself. So meditation comes into play with that. So that's, that's, um, that's the first step in this program. And um, I don't know, I guess I'd do best if you ask questions about it. It's, sure. I mean, it's a 12 session program. It, it, and if you look at it, it feels, it's pretty all encompassing, very comprehensive. Oh my gosh, it really, really is. Um, I want to go back to something you said a second ago before we go into some of the sessions and what they include. You said, get messages from the, the other side. Now, when you said yeah. that, how do you mean the other side? Um, other dimensions. I so, talk to a lot of angels. I talk to guides. I talk to uh, people who have passed. You know, and they all okay. resonate at a different frequency. I talk to ascended masters. And it's not like I'm sitting in my driveway. Well, sometimes I do. <laughs> but just randomly talking to beings but there are higher frequency energies who we can tap into to help guide us to be the best that we can possibly be right and so i don't want to get too much into this but we're in this human body this human form and we all come with an aspect of spirit that light within us right but then there's that part of us that is our higher self that's somewhere up here that we can connect to, let's just say source, all of us. And uh, we forget that, hmm. spiritual amnesia, you know? So that's what I mean, it's tapping into that. I mean, I, I, I talk to my guide all the time. Do you get answers? Let's say you've got a challenge in your life, whatever it might be, something going on. Do you reach out to that realm for answers? Sometimes I reach out. Sometimes the answers come clearly. Sometimes I hear, wait, <laughs> which is the most frustrating because that requires patience. Sometimes I look for signs in nature or even in books. I'll just open to a page or I'll pull an Oracle card and I'll just, it'll be made abundantly clear. And there are other tools. And that's, that's pretty much what I, what I do, what I offer in this tools for how to navigate the daily life from a higher way of thinking. So the answers come. Sometimes I seek them. Sometimes I, um, I, 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 I dig to get to where I need to go to find that answer. I had a challenging, let's just say family event happen recently that I had to do a lot of uh, detachment emotionally in order to see the bigger picture. So it's almost like you had to step out, step out of the situation so you could see it for what it was. Oh, absolutely. Mm, yeah, for sure. I love the the program, just scanning it real quick here, because you could some it's almost like a crash course in energy where somebody could, let's say, I want to be I want to learn Reiki. So it's going to take a while to do that, even to become a Reiki master. And there's a little bit of, you know, maybe some of that in here, but also sound bath, sound healing. And it's I would imagine we don't have to go super deep to get the job done, let's say if I'm a counselor and I want to be a better counselor and and just read somebody's energy and you know, just be more intuitive with them. I don't need to become a Reiki master. I don't have to be proficient at you know sound bowls and sound bath, just enough that I need to know. And that includes everything that I can work with somebody and really get it and help them. That's what I'm getting here. Does it sound like what this is? Yes. Yeah. You're hired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just get it. I mean, I look yeah. at even past life regression. Cool. You know, just to, to, you know, that, and that's one full session. That's session number seven. Uh, that's intense. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, for somebody who wants to even learn this stuff, whether you're, you know, an energy healer, an empath, whatever, just to learn it so you get it and you understand it. That's why I think it's so incredible. Like you have, it's almost this is this is what it looks like. Um, the price fix menu, like I could go to a restaurant and I could get I could get the the reiki and it's a, and a whole big reiki and it's this whole thing great fantastic, and I could get the the chakra ah oh, let's you know, the chakra meal ah oh, this is fantastic I got these two things here I'm gonna do this this is you know pick from the you know this here that there this here and you're getting enough of what you need but you're getting everything now you have a full meal. And you're good to go. And that's kind of what it looks like. And, the, and you go into detail, even like session three, when we talk chakras, 
solar plexus plexus work. Um, yeah, you you have it there. I mean, it, you go into enough detail, but it doesn't seem like it's too much. And that, how long is each each of these uh, sessions? They're two hours. Wow. Okay. It's intense. I this is no joke. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised in two hours that uh, you dig into that like you you can. Yeah, it's um, well, and I I love the analogy of the the menu. I think it's like a like dining in France, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great a great analogy. Uh, yeah, and and the thing you know. I guess for me, I've mastered all these different areas in my own way or gotten certifications and what have you so that people <clears throat> could experience what their particular direct gift is to give back to other people, sure. right? Yeah. And I mean, it's, it is, it's just all encompassing. I don't want to learn deep into chakra balancing i just want to learn about chakras you know and just get enough that i need to know i am intrigued here session nine dad's side ancestry and how it relates to you rewriting the mm. contracts I, I guess we're talking about soul contracts correct and why is it on the dad side it's on both sides so it's actually in session eight too although it's not clear um, this is what I call, I mean, obviously there's a lot of when we're working in the present, there's a lot of working with the quote unquote past and, you know, time is a man-made construct. We could get all sorts of abstract if we really wanted to, but the ancestry itself is really important right now because we're clearing the old belief systems from the past from our own ancestors. For example, if you were working with your dad's side, say, um, there were issues with anger and anger management and it would like surface and it would just come up and affect your throat chakra and then uh, whatever. Um, so what I would do, that's just an example, it would be to take you through a meditative practice of going back seven generations because mm -hmm. epigenetics, I kind of mentioned this lightly. Do you know what they, what it is? What, what epigenetics. Is? Epigenetics. Mm, that version. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, they've done studies about it in Hiroshima and how the effects of the nuclear bombs affected the, the mothers and their babies had uh, abnormalities and what have you. So it's kind of like that. It's like something that happened in the past that affected the parents, right, on a, let's just say, negative level and ultimately affected their DNA and then was passed down generation to generation. So alcoholism, addictive patterns. Uh, I mean, it could be behavioral. It could be emotional. It could be mental. They usually stem from some sort of origin back in the ancestry. And this is a shamanic way of doing things, although I'm describing it in a I don't know, perhaps more scientific way. And I'm looking in this direction because that's the path. <laughs> so I would have you go through and find the ancestor or feel what the energy was and literally go and clear the chakras associated with that particular <sighs> off energy, rewrite the contract, and then travel back into the present. And I've observed through working with, I would say hundreds of clients that the impact that this has not only on them, but their families is profound. Um, it's very powerful. Do you find those things? Do you find those things out? Like, let's say you just said uh, anger management issues from your ancestry, your father, whatever it might be. Do you identify some of those things or, and or do you help somebody figure those out? Yes, yes. Wow. That's why I'm here, you know? it's I, I think it's why we're all here. I've just realized that my life has led up to this point to almost perfect being able to help people go into what they might consider the shadow to heal that so that they can be the best aspect of who they are because if you've got this thing lugging behind you you can't catapult you can't you know nope. so no and it's 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 so empowering and freeing you have to figure it out and even you know i've done hypnosis before to go back to my childhood to figure things out i call it connecting the dots how does it connect from there to now and what what's holding me back what held me back um 
if all of us figured a lot of this stuff out, think about how much further in life we would have be or been, how freer we would have felt, better relationships we would have been in, like all of this stuff, if we uh, had a chance to figure it all out. But, you know, that's, I guess, why we talk about it. Okay, so hypnotherapy, I'm looking down here. That is your regression work. So there it is. There it is. I love hypnotherapy. That was my favorite certification by far. Yeah. The, the mind is so fascinating. Yeah. And, and I tell everybody, get, get hypnotherapy. That's it. That's your answer right there. Go for it. Do it. But usually it's the last thing, the last thing that people pick. So now, now I've got a clearer picture because I wondered how you went back to figure those things out, but it's, yeah. it's typically right through hypnotherapy. Wow. It is. And what's interesting is we talked about the tarot last time, and I know you're skeptical. I'm, I'm going to do a reading for you at some point. <laughs> You'll see. You got cards? I Well, yeah, of course. I, I mean, we don't have time today, but um, we'll, we'll figure something out because I think it'd be really fun for you to see that it's not so woo-woo. I'm not so much skeptical. I'm just not fully vested in it. I've I've had readings and they were man, it's pretty good then other ones like eh, more good than not um but when it comes to intuitiveness um psychic mediums the ones who are truly legit i got i can't punch a hole in it it's the it, the facts speak for themselves when you validate something and it's very specific this person did not do any research on you there's no way they could have figured out a lot of these things um and the same thing with uh with with the energy work with you know, even, even the sound bath, tell us about that, how you do that, how you teach somebody, or, you, or is that just kind of a, like an intro? I see it in session number four. The sound bowl, the sound bath, yeah. um, essentially that's for energy alignment. So it's interesting you ask this because I thought about teaching a class in working with singing bowls and the frequency. Yeah. I don't actually teach it, but I introduce it. Okay. But I would love to teach it because I, I mentioned too that music is my uh, muse. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And I guess once you figure out or learn that frequencies do something to you, then you know why music is so big in our lives and has been for literally thousands of years because it does something to you in terms of the vibration and the frequency. You might not like a song that I like. Maybe it's because of the, forget the lyrics. Maybe it's because of the, the frequency of the music. It could be even the frequency of the person singing. How many times have you listened to a song? You don't even know what they're saying. It's in another language, but it's like, wow, I like that. I don't know why I like it, but that's good. I like that. You can't figure it out, <laughs> but it's the vibration. You're picking up on something. It is. Do you think yeah, it is. artists make music, they're sending out vibrations, even potentially uh, intentional? intentional? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that, uh, I'm, I think too that it resonates with, it's how they express themselves. I mean, I grew up playing the piano. You and I, I don't know if you ever played music or anything. We didn't talk about that, but. It, it's it's a running yeah. joke. I play music, but I play it on the radio. I can play no. <laughs> I wish I could. I can't sing. I'll do. I'll sing just for fun as a joke, but uh, I can't. That's just not, you know, not to say I can't learn. I don't really have a desire to, but if you name any song, name an artist, uh, pick a year, I'll tell you everything you need to know about it, how long the intro is, how long the song is. And I, I, I could almost guarantee I know the song. You know, just, Interesting. Uh, you can still learn to play something. I guess. I don't, I just don't have the time. You know, if I had to I I, I do it, I can apply myself and figure it out. I can. And I took guitar lessons way back in the day. Um, and I would love to, actually. You know, I have much respect for all musicians. I mean, I could just stare at somebody playing bass. It's like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> what you can do with that. And what people feel right. from that. Well, what I was going to say is, you know, from the piano and then different instruments moving from there, there's uh, that, that frequency, the sound. It was actually how I could emote into the keyboard whatever I was feeling. And then I went on to learn that this is an interesting fact that Einstein used to come up with all of his uh, theories when he was playing piano. Isn't that interesting? Because it helps with creativity and the OM that they talk about with yoga. Sure. 
is the initial sound of creation. So all creation comes from sound frequency, which is why the bowl I'm pointing in that direction. So that's where they are in my room are so powerful. Yeah, I, I totally get it. And the intricacies of even playing, I can picture Einstein doing that as he kind of works things out. You know, yep. just, I was just, you know, offline before I was taking care of some work and I haven't done it in a while. I was listening to music and it's like, it just goes so much easier. It's so much fun. Like it just, and I'm talking like random songs from the seventies that, you know, they were big hits, but I'm just like, ah, pick 1973, pick 87, whatever. I just, I'm all, I'm like, you don't want to be in the car with me because I'm going to change the the song every 15 seconds. It's just, I hear something and I get it. And I was at the Wendy's drive through on the phone with somebody. And as we're talking, I'm like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I'm like, Billy Joel, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked up the lyrics and it was like, oh, you know what? Eh, that, was a, that was a really good song. But it popped in my head. It was the weirdest moment. That means, okay, so that's a sign that you are a throat chakra strong intuitive, that you have the capacity to hear things. Not like you and I are talking. Right. I don't but think that because I'll share with you. Like you said, you had a family situation. Um, I did three weeks ago and I knew there was an answer and I need the answer to help out my daughter. So there's an answer and I'm not getting it. What is it? And I said, universe, can you please give me the answer? And usually I reach out to my mom, mom, there's something there. Give me, give me, give me something, please. What do you got? And I'm driving. I can tell you exactly where I was. And all of a sudden out of the sky, into my brain was let it be the song let it be i'm like why am i hearing let it be yeah there will be an answer let it be and at the beginning of the song he sings about mother mary it makes me cry that's so that song beautiful my mom's name is Rosemary. your mom is her heart is huge huge i feel her she's always around She's with you all the time. <laughs> so I get to work here 30 minutes after this song drops in my head. By the way, I took the lyrics and it's on the wall. Uh, I got a phone call. It was the answer. Yeah. So it's like, Chills. ask ask, and you'll get it. You'll get it. You have to be open to it. Um, but it was there. And that, you know, that song. Okay. And when he says Mary at the beginning, a lot of people think it's a religious reference. It's, it's his mom. She passed when he was 14. Interesting. It says Mother Mary. We think, you know, biblical, but it's not. Um, and I, I wasn't even thinking that, connecting it to my mom. But then when I thought about it, I'm like, oh, okay. They're, they're, it's all coming together now. Got it. That would be good enough. But I got the phone call and it was it was impactful. That was that was the answer that made it clear. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I got nothing for you. Just whatever drops in the sky. That's what I hear, what I see. I don't know. Um, can you teach people to even be more intuitive like we're talking about? That's what I do. Really? I can mean, I? yeah. To be to be more open and more aware to to hear things and and recognize that this is something you're getting for a reason. Yeah. And to can say it be, the least. let's say you're working with somebody. Let's say you you are a doctor and you have a patient and you're trying to figure them out a little bit more. Would you be more connected to them after going through all the sessions? Yes. Well, I don't doubt it for a second. I just wanted to, to hear you say it. Wow. This yeah. is so huge for people that do that kind of work. Yeah. And it's um, nothing brings me more joy as a teacher, because that's my background, right? Than watching somebody grow and discover themselves and that experience expansion and stepping into who they are because I don't want to say that life has limitations but sometimes we're taught that that's the case and I teach the exact opposite it's really about understanding those inner clues and hints and just you already get it you know your mom talks to you um all the time uh I mean she's around you and so say I was talking to you, for example, about expanding on your intuition, I, what I would do is help you or help reinforce 
what she's saying in addition to, you know, learning how to talk to the angels, learning how to talk to ascended masters, learning how to talk to um, pretty much anything and anyone, because when we learn how to talk to them and move outside of our human thinking, and I'm going, I'm kind of circling back around, it really teaches us who we are authentically. Do you, do you feel that when you teach somebody to be more in tune, is it that you are helping them fine tune into the messages or, and, or blocking out the stuff around them, around you, like just yeah. the clutter and everything. So now you, you've, you've learned how to do this so that this is not this. Now this is this, that message that came through. Yes. And so I was talking about the meditative strategies, you know, learning about energetic boundaries, because sometimes I have people come in and there's all sorts of stuff flying at them. And I'm like, okay, wait, let's filter out the stuff that's not working. Yeah. <laughs> and then let's fine tune the channel so that we can be in tune and in touch with the truth. Right. And that's, that I can't remember if we talked about it last time again, but the discernment is probably the most important aspect of this because you can channel things that you don't necessarily want to be working with. And that's kind of, I, I have to teach how to open space, how to, uh, you know, ground your energy, how to open up the chakras, how to self assess on a very energetic level, how to assess the chakras, how to clear the chakras, you know, because as a healer and a mentor doing what I do, I, we have to be clean and clear, right? So that we can work with other people to teach um, how to do that. It yeah. must, once you learn all this stuff, let's say you work with somebody, that somebody must have so much more clarity just in life in general. You know, it's almost like a clean diet. You know, you start eating right and it's just like you've kind of detox, you cleaned out. You know, this is more spiritually cleansing yourself so that you can figure these things out and, and, and use them to your best, you know, even to get clarity, just, you know, you're trying to work on something and you're just trying to figure out an answer, whatever it might be, you'll find it a lot easier where yeah. you might not have even found it at all. Uh, yeah. Super cool. Like it's, um, I've never seen anything like this, <laughs> the, way, the way you offer it in terms of the sessions and all the details. Oh, I was going to ask you about Akashic records and there it is in session 11. And I was wondering when you said about the soul contract and going back, are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.